Okay guys, the uh, votes are in and uh, by a, a large margin, uh, most of you guys voted for a updated tour of my native watercraft Slayer Pro Pell 13. Um, as you can see, it's a little bit cold out here in central New York, snow is down and uh, the fishing is definitely slowed. So today's a good day to, to kind of show you an overview of how I most recently set up my kayak for fishing. So I've had this kayak for about three years now and it's been amazing. It's been really uh, uh, a game changer for me in the way that I fish and has definitely put more fish in the boat for me. So I'm going to do a pretty detailed walkthrough of how I set this up um, for a day of fishing and this would be how I would set it up pretty much fully loaded. Uh, this is not exactly how I take it out every single time, but uh, if I'm, you know, to go to a new body of water or fish somewhere that uh, I just have no idea what the fish are going to do, this is probably how I would uh, rig it up. So let's, uh, let's start at the front and we'll work our way back. So first off, uh, I want to go over my fish finder setup, how I set up my Ray, Ray Marine Dragonfly. A lot of you guys asked me that question and it's pretty simple. Uh, for me personally, I pretty much stripped this kayak down um, fully when I transport it and uh, when I get to the water I just rig it up load everything up uh, including the fish finder so it's a real simple way uh, that I can install and uninstall this fish finder it takes me about a minute uh, pretty much what I do is I have a uh, battery box in the front just keep it in the front hatch it's got a 12 volt Cabela's battery I usually keep an extra one in there as a backup but this uh, this usually gives me about 10 hours on the water fully charged uh, so it's a great battery um, and I just put that in the front hatch I've got a lot of the excess wiring here just zip tied um, And I keep that in the front hatch as well. This right here is the uh, swing arm transducer mount um, So one of the nice things about the native watercraft uh, Slayer propel is it has these pre-installed gear tracks lining the uh, perimeter of the boat so uh, This is how I set it up But you could essentially put this transducer arm anywhere along the boat including the back if you wanted to um, so that's a really easy way to install it quickly for me and then what I do is I actually just run the wiring right through the gear track on the side just so it's kind of tucked out of the way and then I've got my fish finder right up here again on a gear track on a ram ball mount and again it's something that's really easy to adjust um, sometimes if I'm standing up uh, and I want to see the fish finder I'll just tilt it like that real simple to do um, real portable way for me to to get this on and off without uh, you know, without worrying about taking up too much time. Also in the front hatch, pretty much the only other thing I'll keep in the front hatch is my dry bag. This is a Sea Line Baja bag, it's a 10 liter bag. And uh, I pretty much keep extra GoPro stuff in here, uh, battery stuff, uh, wallet, keys, whatnot. And uh, you know, pretty simple but effective dry bag. Um, if it's colder or the, you know, the weather's looking a little iffy, then I might keep some extra clothes in here. Um, but that's pretty much all I keep in this front hatch. And it's, again, a very spacious front hatch. You could keep, you know, more Plano boxes or extra equipment in there if you wanted to. Um, so a real nice feature uh, on this kayak is the extra storage in the front. A couple other things I have in the front. Uh, again, on the gear track is a uh, panfish portrait. And this is where I keep my front GoPro. Um, I use this occasionally, usually when I catch a big fish or uh, if I want to just get some, you know, a different angle. But what I mainly use this for, it's kind of silly, it's a uh, kind of a paddle holder. So I, you know, even though this has propel drive, you know, sometimes if you're fishing in areas where there's a lot of grass and you can't really utilize the propel drive or you just want to make, you know, small adjustments or turns, uh, I like to have a paddle handy. and. I've found that just kind of keeping it set like that is real quick access for me to just grab it and just, you know, do a turn or two and uh, it's still out of the way. As far as paddles go, I've got a uh, Warner Callista paddle and uh, it's been a great paddle for me. Super lightweight, carbon fiber, um, real easy to use one handed and uh, I've enjoyed this paddle quite a bit when I've had to use it. The only other thing I have up in the front is a net. Um, this is a G2 landing net. Um, it usually only comes with a handle about to there and what I did is I just took a piece of PVC pipe uh, Put some foam in it and I uh, used some pipe clamping to kind of connect it and put some duct tape around it Real good net. I like the extra length to it just so you can reach those fish And what I do to kind of keep my net out of the way But still very accessible is I actually have a X grip ram mount uh, it's for cell phones and other devices that you can kind of clamp in there and keep in place, which I do occasionally, but I actually like it to kind of cradle 
the handle of my net so it's right in front of me at all times when i get a fish on i can just grab the net very easily and uh and get that fish so that's kind of how i have my net and my paddle set up and it's been very effective for me so far uh with using this kayak so kind of the midsection of the kayak really not too much here of course we do actually have the most important part of this kayak is the propel drive and this is a I mean, this thing's amazing. I don't think I could go to a kayak without propel drive anymore, especially with the reverse feature. So uh, this has been huge for me. I really enjoyed it. Definitely allows you to fish more efficiently and make more casts. Um, it just drops down into the center uh, compartment here and pretty much real easy to take up. You've got this hatch cover right there drops down nicely fits pretty secure and that's more for when you're in shallow water and really thick grass and you, you know that you can't really use the propel drive uh, but one quick tip for you guys if you do get hung up in grass kind of unexpectedly um, what you can do is instead of keep pedaling forward do a couple quick turns going backwards don't do big turns do a couple quick turns you can see how much just a little bit of a crank turns that propeller and if you can do that a couple times quickly, it usually just kind of frees that grass out of your prop. So there's a tip for you if you get that hung up. You know, Native's done a good job about uh, giving you a, a hatch cover that actually is, you know, um, usable for something else. And it's, it's got a nice cup holder here. Uh, I pretty much just put uh, baits that I've used throughout the day, plastics, stuff like that. Kind of use it as a waste basket and just throw them in there. And then at the end of the day, I can just dump it in the trash and... I'm not uh, littering. All right, so now we've got the uh, the seat, very comfortable seat. It's again on gear track, something that I take on and off the kayak every time, and uh, it pretty much uses these, uh, these these screws to to lock in place, and you can move it fore and aft. Um, and a really nice seat. It's got a lot of adjustment to it. And uh, right here, I've got some things, some tools that I pretty much need on a regular basis when I'm out on the water. You've got fish grips right here. I've just got some bungee tied to them. Um, you know, you can also utilize these not for you know your pike and pickerel, but if you're if you're uh, you know in a tournament and you need to CPR your fish, you can just put the bass on the grips, put them down in the water, and uh, kind of get your stuff prepared uh, before taking that picture. We've got some pliers here. Quick, easy access. We've got some scissors. And then one thing that I use quite frequently is the KVD fish sticks. I've talked about this before. Just a scent that is, you know, super easy to apply to your baits and definitely helps you get more bites in my opinion. So that's right at the, at the ready. Still using the same life vest that I've used for uh, pretty much the last three years as well. I got the NRS Chinook. I uh, usually have some, uh, some snips right here. Um, keep my phone in this pocket. You notice, and I'm gonna have to upgrade this to maybe something like a, a lanyard, but I've got some 50 pound braid here. And that always ties to the uh, one of the ports of my phone on, on my life proof case. Uh, you guys probably, if you watched some of my previous videos, you know that I dropped my phone in the canal and that is gone. And it was on a flotation device and um, in a life proof case but it still sank so now it's connected to my life jacket it's not going anywhere if it drops it's at least connected to me so that's that uh i really like this life vest it's got a lot of storage options you know i've got uh, i can keep identifiers in here i can keep extra baits in here um right here got a whistle you got to keep a whistle with you when you're on the water um so that's the life vest uh more on the seat so coming back here uh native you can buy a, a seat a backpack for the, the the native seat they provide i've actually just used an old uh, soccer bag uh, it gives me a little bit extra storage and i can keep more in there um, so i do keep quite a bit of uh, gear in here uh, kind of the main pouch you know got a busy carbon pro this is by yak attack uh, this is basically a 360 light that you need to have legally in certain states if you're fishing before uh, sunrise and again what's nice about this is it's gear track accessible you can put it anywhere along your boat where there's gear tracks and uh, it keeps you visible it keeps you safe so definitely keep one of these with me at all times in the backpack i've got a buff um, got a lure retriever you know, if I throw eh, some relatively expensive baits, but you know, you always want to get your bait back. So I've got a lure retriever right here. Um, 
Got some duct tape. I've got some Mend It. This is a soft plastic repair glue. You never know what can happen on the water. You never know. You can never be too prepared. And sometimes you don't, uh, you aren't prepared. You don't bring enough of a certain soft plastic and your, or a certain color. And Mend It can save your day if you, you know, those soft plastics tear and you, you really want to keep using them. So Mend It, always keep some of that with me. Got a little headlamp here. You know, this is kind of for early morning or maybe later at night when you need a little bit more visibility and when you're, you know, fumbling around with stuff or retying. Got a headlamp here. I keep an extra prop with me. Uh, you know, my prop is actually never broken on me, but uh, I have heard it happening before and you never know what you're going to run into. Uh, so I keep an extra prop with me just in case that ever happens. I've also got... Some extra line in here. Uh, this is just a thousand yard spool of uh, 20 pound Seaguar fluorocarbon. Uh, probably the line I use most overall, so I, I keep a lot of extra line with me of that. Looks like I got a frog in here and an extra frog and a little bag of miscellaneous extra items, some terminal tackle. I've got some extra jigs in here, uh, some hooks, even got some crappie gear drop shot weights yeah, extra flipping hooks kind of just uh, backup supplies in the top pouch very important to have hopefully you don't have to use this a lot but I've got a uh, first aid kit pretty basic got some bandages got some uh, you know neosporin some hand sanitizer um, then I've got the uh, a sharpie marker if you guys fish uh, tournaments a lot you're gonna need one of these sharpie markers with you at all times whether it is to darken your hog trough lines or to write identifiers on your hand in the front pouch here keep some wave away this is uh, really good stuff to clean sunglasses and fish finder screens off uh, always keep some of that with me it comes in handy Got some bug spray. One thing I don't have in here that I usually would have in here is sunscreen, so I'm gonna need to get some sunscreen. Wet wipes, those are self-explanatory. And uh, in the bottom pouch, again, another pouch you, you hope you don't have to go into, but I do keep extra tools. I keep a repair kit for basically my boat here. I've got a wrench in here, I've got a, uh, a crank pull arm, some pliers, uh, some some wire cutters, some uh, screwdriver, some extra prop pins for my propel drive. Basically, if anything on my boat breaks or loosens or comes, you know, apart in some way or another, which it has, to be honest with you, I've got the tools I need to to repair that on the water, on the spot. So, again, a, a pouch I don't have to go into or hope I don't have to go into, but it is there just in case. So to finish up, we got the back of the boat. This is pretty much where I keep all my rods and all my tackle. Um, I use the Yak Attack Black Pack, really handy uh, piece of equipment to store all these items. Uh, first off, we have the hog trough. If you fish kayak tournaments a lot, you're gonna need one of these guys, hog trough. Um, I put a little foam in the back, these back slips here, and that allows it to float. I would highly recommend you do that because if you drop this in the water, it's gonna sink to the bottom. So put some foam back there. Uh, here I just added some uh, some pool noodle, put some duct tape around it, and added some bungee. Um, this just allows me to, you know, store it pretty easily, uh, quick access, and it's out of the way. So that's come in handy for me. Um, here I've got my GoPro camera mount. A lot of people ask questions on this specific mount, how I, you know, made it or where I bought it from. I'm going to put a link in the description. Uh, as to the video you can look at where this is made and how to make it i think this cost me like a hundred bucks all parts included uh, but it's a really versatile mount you can extend this pretty far i use this to get some of my underwater footage as well so this has been about i don't know i think i made this four years ago and it's held up ever since so uh, again something i can remove you can put it at different angles if you want um, So there's a lot of uh, mounting options and angles you can get with this. And this is just attached to a Scotty locking mount. So inside my black pack, I'm not, not going to go into too much detail, but again, this is where I keep all my extra baits, my uh, Plano boxes. I use the 3600 size boxes. Uh, they fit well in here, and I've got five in here right now. Um, I've got 
all my extra soft plastics in here as well as some miscellaneous items i guess i do have sunscreen sunscreen uh sunglasses uh, i've got some gloves in there some sun gloves um looks like i have a little savage gear duck in here as well can't wait to try that a um, little bit of food and that's just kind of a miscellaneous bag in there um, keep a towel extra line i've got some leaders in there some extra braid that's where i keep my line um, for me i like to organize my soft plastics the little ziploc baggies um, i don't like to keep my soft plastics in plano boxes i like to keep them keep them in their original packaging so here i've got a bag full of uh, bedding baits um, i've got some rage menace baits in here as well as some uh Straight King Rodents. Keep all my worms, my Senkos, my drop shots in one in, in this bag. And then I've got some trailers in here. I've got some uh, Rage Craws. I've got some Swim Senko trailers. So that would be the uh, trailer bag. Uh, and the other bag that I actually have is kind of a bag that sits right on top of all this gear. Uh, and this is kind of the bag that I make throughout the day. So if I, I find that the bass are hitting a certain bait or lure, I'll just kind of throw that package into this bag and it kind of keeps that readily available for me and I'm not digging through these other bags to find certain baits. So usually by the end of the end of the day that has three or four bags in it. A lot of people have big terminal tackle boxes. Uh, I did or I do, uh, but I've found it to be more efficient to just keep a little tiny 3500 size box in here. And I can pretty much fit all the terminal tackle I need in there. I've got my hooks, my weights, uh, you know, wacky rig tools, uh, you know, everything that I pretty much need terminal tackle wise in this small little box. It stays nice and condensed and out of the way. It allows me to have more room inside the, the black pack for other things. I'll quickly go through my 3600 boxes. This box here, got my jigs, you know, I got my hack attack jigs and the half ounce, three eighths ounce. I've got some Denny Brower structure jigs in here. I've got some hair jigs in here. Um, you know, I keep my chatter baits in here as well. Uh, Z-Man custom chatter baits. And I've got some swim, jig swim jigs in here as well. Crankbait box. Keep all my crankbaits in there. Square bills, uh, you know, my Spro Little Johns, some DT6s. Here's my swim bait box. This is my top water box. Got my spooks, whopper plopper, some BK grass burners, and then of course some frogs. And the last box I have in here is just kind of a miscellaneous box. I've got some jerk baits, some uh, lipless cranks. Got to have my maps and then just some deeper diving cranks. So my black pack holds about eight rods. I rarely take eight rods with me, but it is there just in case. Um, one thing that I did do to kind of help secure some of my rods is I added these little bungees and I added just a screw to the, to the opposite side. And that just kind of flips down, keeps your rods in place. And I have, uh, I have flipped before and it's, uh, saved me some rods in about 40 foot of water so i highly recommend if you don't do this have some kind of way of securing your rods or your more expensive gear to the to the kayak always prepare as if you're going to flip because you never know and obviously you never expect it but uh, it might save you some gear in the long run um, the only other thing i have on this kayak and it's pretty much de it depends on where i launch um, but is my sea tug and this is just the uh, way i transport the kayak down the ramp you know i like to take my time when i get all my gear rigged up my kayak set up again this boat is pretty much bare when i transport it so when i get to the water uh, i have to put everything on it so if you're at a ramp that's really busy and there's lots of boats they don't really appreciate it if you're just sitting there at the ramp loading your stuff up so uh, a lot of the times i like to park get my kayak down set up right at at the truck and uh, put the kayak on the wheels and then just wheel down and, and you're there and you're not uh, taking anybody off. So that is pretty much the uh, full rundown of my Slayer Propel 13. It's been a really good kayak to me, helped me definitely catch more fish, uh, be more efficient on the water. And uh, yeah, I will probably keep this for another few months and uh, 
there there is some uh, plans for a new kayak in the works uh, more on that later but hope you guys enjoyed the video if you do have questions check out the description i'll put as much information as i can in, in there uh, but if it's not in there just leave a comment and i'll try to get back to you so uh, that's it thanks for watching